This is the city, Los Angeles, California. With a population of three million people, there's always something happening. Things were slower at the turn of the century. There were only 100,000 people to worry about. And there were only 109 policemen to do the worrying. 1933, the automobile was coming into its own. The 294 men assigned to traffic control processed 11,000 accidents. In fact, it was getting so crowded you couldn't drive your ostrich in the street. By 1940, the city had more cars than people and a maze of freeways were beginning to take shape. To handle the problem, the department put together the largest motorcycle police contingent in the world. Today, the department is highly mobile. Los Angeles has less policemen per capita than any other major city in the country. That makes my job a little tougher. I carry a badge. The story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. Angeles, we were working out of the training division at the police academy. The boss is Captain Vernon Hoy. My partner's Bill Gannon. My name's Friday. In addition to its regular program for training recruit officers, the academy also trains police women. I was lecturing the cadets, as they are called, in criminal law and arrest techniques. Captain Hoy added another assignment to the schedule. class in five minutes on preliminary investigation. This afternoon? Some office work, grading a few exam papers. Got Lady Arthur coming in, writer for one of the New York magazines. She gonna do a piece on us, is she? On the cadets. Careers for the modern woman or something like that. It was set up through public affairs. Well, then why doesn't Dan Cook walk her around? Anybody know our facilities better than we do? No, sir. Besides, I get the idea she's a nitpicker. Yeah. Her name's Lee. Dorothy Lee? That's right. You read women's magazines, Gannon? Yes, sir. Well, sometimes. The wife gets them all. I've read some of the things this Lee woman's written. Well, what about him? I don't know, Skipper. Makes pretty good reading, I guess, except for the person she's writing about. How much do we show her, Captain? Whatever she wants to see, we don't have anything to hide. We won't when she's finished. What's the matter, Friday? Can't you handle it? Oh, yes, sir. Don't worry about that. I won't. You know, she might turn out to be young and pretty. Well, now, what difference will that make? A word to the wise, Joe. Watch your step. Oh, come on. I'm just the guide. She's writing about careers for women. There's the danger. Huh? Joe, one of these days, you're going to make a career for some woman. <laughs> the curriculum for police women requires 320 hours, including night classes, over an eight-week course. Besides classroom instruction on every phase of police work, the cadets are given physical training and self-defense combat and target shooting, field trips and field problems, examination and reviews. This class would graduate in a little over two weeks. 1.30 p.m., Bill was getting ready for his next lecture on juvenile work, search and seizure. I'm looking for a sergeant named Friday. Yes, ma'am. You? That's right. Hope you didn't want your door closed. I leave them open. That's all right. I'm going right through it. I've got a class in a minute. I guess you must be Miss Lee. I guess I must be. It's my partner, Bill Gannon. Gannon. Miss Lee, welcome to the police academy. Please use my desk if you'd like. Thank you. Gentlemen, Miss Lee. Officer Jones, Sergeant Callum. Down. My Friday, you are a leader among men, aren't you? Suppose I just show you around, and then if you have some questions, we can come back here. Just a minute, Friday. Let's get started right. I'm not here for the 40-cent tour and the memorized commentary. I want to see everything, and I want to talk to these girls. Then I'll form my own opinion. Well, I wouldn't want to influence that. Oh, not a chance. That's what I figured. We're a little bit here, aren't we? Your public relations people shoved me off on you, and you don't like it. 
That's all right. I've never been very high on cops. Why's that? Why's what? Well, I just wondered why you dislike policemen. You let me do the interviewing, huh? The big mystery is why anybody becomes a policeman, or more to the point, a policewoman. Do you know? Yes, ma'am, I think I do. Two reasons. The job is interesting, and it's satisfying. Now, putting people in jail is which? Interesting or satisfying? There's satisfaction in doing a job that has to be done, and to be where it happens is interesting. I think fun is what you mean. You're writing it, Miss Lee. Have you ever read any of my pieces? No, ma'am, but my partner has. He didn't like them. He thinks you had fun writing them. On Dorothy Lee's request, we dispensed with the usual guided tour of the police academy. 1.45 p.m., we joined the cadets in the classroom. All right, now we come to the subject of the cursory search or frisk. By definition, it's a pat from the outside, but not reaching into the clothing. The purpose is to determine if the subject is armed. You also open the purse if it's a female, or even if it isn't, <laughs> to see if it contains a weapon. Now, a detailed search is made only A, subsequent to a physical arrest, B, with a search warrant, or C, with the subject's permission. I call your attention to this drawing. What is not a search? A frisk is not a search, and things visible do not constitute a search. Yes? Winter, sir, can you tell me the circumstances when a subject gives permission to be searched? Yes, when she's clean. It's more likely to happen when it's a room rather than a person. In that case, search only the area contingent to the search. Don't pry any deeper than your authorization, but don't close your eyes to anything obvious. Thank you, sir. Yes? Anderson, sir. I don't quite follow that last part, Officer Gannon. Could you give us an illustration? All right. Let's say you have a warrant to search a room for a stolen piano. Now, if you open a drawer and find a pound of heroin, it would be illegal to seize it. The reason being that you didn't really expect to find the piano in that drawer. But suppose I found the heroin hidden in the piano. Then you'd seize it and have every right to expect a good grade in this class. <laughs> Thank you, Officer Gannon. Any more questions? Lee, sir. My question's a little off the point, Officer Gannon, but if you don't mind. Not at all. In the case of a policeman arresting a female, do you recommend a frisk or a detailed search of the suspect? Neither, Miss Lee. The procedure is to take the suspect in and then search the back seat of your unit. They know they'll be searched by a policewoman, so they often unload drugs or a weapon down behind the seat. I hope that answers your question. Well, yes, but the way you tell it, it doesn't sound like much fun. Can I see outside? Sure. All right, now do you all understand everything so far about what constitutes a search and what does not? That second girl who asked the question, the little dark-haired one, you know the one I mean? Joyce Anderson. I'd like to use her. She'll give me a point of view. The Los Angeles Police Academy, as seen through the eyes of a typical recruit. You'll agree she's typical. Yes, ma'am. I thought you'd say that all the time, knowing very well she's prettier, smarter, and has twice the personality of anyone in that room. Well, I don't blame you for wanting to show your best, Friday, but don't try to con me. You picked her, Miss Lee. Because she'll photograph. I'll have somebody follow us around with a camera. Well, it's too late today. Can you set it up for tomorrow, or do I have to go through your PR man? No, ma'am, that won't be necessary. Come around any time. We'll take care of you. I could read that two ways. Would you like to meet Anderson now? Fine. Anderson, see you a minute. Yes, sir? Anderson, this is Miss Lee. Hello. Miss Lee is a writer. She's doing a magazine piece on police women cadets. Sergeant, may I, please? Your name's Joyce, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. How old are you, Joyce? 23. Why do you want to be a policewoman? Well, so I won't be a secretary. I don't mean there's anything wrong with being a secretary. It's a good career for a woman. But police work is, well, it's a challenge. And it's a lot more interesting. Besides, there are promotional opportunities with a good salary range. You two must have read the same brochure. Would you like to talk with Anderson alone? Never mind. We'll get into it in depth as we go along. You don't object to being written about, do you? I guess not, but... What's it all about? You're my typical policewoman, Joyce. I'm going to follow you around for a day. See what you do, pick your brain, have a lot of pictures taken. Then I'll write it up for a national magazine. You don't seem very excited. Well, it's just... I don't know. Why me? Why not you? Well, I think one of the other girls would be more typical. Carol Winters, for instance. She's a much better student. Or Anne McClure. Now, she's had modeling experience. You're the one I want. Any reason you can't handle it, Anderson? Well, I... No, sir. No reason. Then I'll see you in the morning. That's all, Anderson. Thanks. Well, she doesn't seem exactly eager, does she? She'll do it. Why, because it's an order? It's part of the job. 
I suppose I could use one of the others. That's entirely up to you, Miss Lee. Oh, you were ready for that one, weren't you? You made up your mind to use her in any case, though, haven't you? Unless you pull her out on me. First class is at 6.50 tomorrow morning. I wouldn't miss it for money. The policewoman training program is under the direct supervision of Sergeant Speck. Besides instructing in the classroom, Connie Speck serves as counselor for the cadets. Hi, Joe. Connie, I'm afraid I might have put one of your girls in a bind. Joyce Anderson? Yeah, she's just been picked as a typical cadet. By Dorothy Lee? Heard she was here. Was that her out there? Yeah. You ever read anything she's written? Sure. Is she going to do a job on us? More ways than one, it looks like. What's worrying you, Joe? Anderson? That's right. Any reason she shouldn't do it? Well, that's what I wanted to ask you, Connie. I can tell you this much. Anderson started out at the top of the class and stayed there until about a week ago. Now she seems to have trouble concentrating. Yeah. Yesterday, she looked like she'd been crying, stayed behind after the other girls left. To talk it over with you? I think she wanted to, Joe, but when I asked her if she was all right, she backed off. she give you any idea? Just that it was a personal problem. When I told her it seemed to be affecting her work, she said maybe it didn't matter. Well, why not? Said she probably wouldn't be around for the final exam. Then she ran out of the room. Have you talked to her since? No, I thought it would all come out at the next progress interview. Her next interview is tomorrow morning. With Lee? With Lee. I'll hold a good thought. Joyce Anderson had passed a rigid screening process to get into the academy. She had completed almost three quarters of the training course, and her grades had been excellent. For her to drop out now would be a loss to the department. As a first step in an effort to prevent this, Bill suggested she be relieved of the interview with Dorothy Lee. 4.40 p.m. Are you coming with me, Joyce, or aren't you? Please, Russ, let me explain. I'm sick of you explaining. You can't explain it to me. Russ, please. Come on. Oh! Russ. Leave it. Come on. All right, hold it. That's enough of that. What's going on here, Anderson? It's got nothing to do with you, I'll mister. I'll get around to you, fella. Right now, I'm talking to Miss Anderson. It's all right. You sure about that, Anderson? You're giving away a lot of weight. Maybe you'd like to even it up. If necessary, that can be arranged. No, please. There's nothing wrong. Honestly, it's just a little misunderstanding. Russ, this is Sergeant Friday and Officer Gannon. I told you about them, remember? They're instructors. Now I remember. Now you tell them about me. This is my fiancé, Russ Landa. Okay, you got it straight? Yes, now that we know. All right. I'm sorry, Sergeant. It's all right, Anderson. Are you coming with me or not? Well... I'm sorry. I can tell you something. About Anderson's personal problem. That's it. Tuesday, May 12th. I was scheduled for only one class today. A two-hour session on preliminary investigation. Before leaving the office, I phoned Connie Speck and arranged for her to pick another cadet for Dorothy Lee to interview. 6.35 a.m. Good morning, Sergeant Friday. Good morning, Anderson. Something I can do for you? Well, I thought Miss Lee would be here. No, that's not true. I saw her in the coffee shop. I wanted to explain about yesterday in the corridor. Well, that isn't necessary, and you don't have to do the interview if you'd rather not. I'll do it, Sergeant. I don't really mind. You want to sit down for a minute? No, thank you. Tell me, when are you getting married? It's supposed to be the day after graduation. I mean, that's the date, whether I graduate or not. Do you want to quit the academy, Anderson? No, sir. I want to become a policewoman. Well, I'm glad to hear that. A lot of time and money has been spent on your training so far. You know that. Yes, sir, I know. Well, and what's the problem? Your friend doesn't like the idea of you working? That's what he says, part of the time. Then he'll turn around and admit if I don't keep working for a year or two, we won't be able to buy a house. What's he do for a living? Construction work. Russ makes very good money, but of course it's seasonal. We'll need my salary if we're ever going to save up a down payment. Then it's being a policewoman that he objects to, is that it? Yes, sir. Why? Says he'll wear the pants in the family. Why don't you both talk it over with Sergeant Speck? Maybe she can give you some answers. I thought about it, but Russ wouldn't accept them. Why not? Sergeant Speck's a policewoman. <laughs> Dorothy Lee sketched out a rough plan for her magazine story. It was her intention to record with detailed notes and pictures a full day in the life of policewoman Joyce Anderson. 6.45 a.m. One thing you had to say about Dorothy Lee, she was a hard worker. She began and ended each day at the police academy with the cadets. 
There was no doubt she was doing an in-depth magazine article. 6.50 a.m. The day began with my lecture on the functions of a desk officer. This is one of the most important subjects in the curriculum for cadets because male desk officers have been almost entirely replaced by police women. The cadets were advised to review their notes and be ready to answer six questions on their final exam. Every class period in the training school is 50 minutes long. Even when a two-hour lecture is scheduled, there's a 10-minute coffee break at the end of every hour. From 9 until 9.50 a.m., Joyce Anderson received shooting orientation and shot the required number of rounds on the range. 11.40 a.m., a training film in first aid was run and the class instructed in the general techniques to be used in cases of accident, illness, and emergency childbirth. How to stop bleeding, administer artificial respiration, how to treat shock and poison cases. This course qualified the students for the Red Cross First Aid Certificate. 1.20 p.m., Officer Eubanks gave a demonstration of the proper methods to follow in stopping a vehicle containing misdemeanor or felony suspects. This was followed by actual participation by the cadets of the techniques of removal and search of the occupants and the vehicle. Usually scheduled for the final period of the day is the class in physical training and self-defense. The girls engage in calisthenics, running, and competitive group games. Two physical fitness qualifications tests are given during the course. 3.25 p.m. Well, there's one point I'll give on Friday. That's a tough course. I'm beat. Yeah, so are the girls, I guess. And it's all wasted effort. Oh. Well, for Joyce, anyway, she's not going to make it to graduation. Is that right? Well, I don't have a signed confession, but I know she's got a fellow who doesn't want a cop in the family. So, you're going to lose Friday. What's that do to your story? Gives me a big finish. Cop turns in badge for love. I wouldn't write that till it happens. Oh, it'll happen. Joyce is no fool. Is that what career women are? <laughs> I think I've been here too long. I'm beginning to like you, Friday. But you're wrong. I've got a perfectly good husband. We've got a lot of married police women. You won't get Anderson. She tell you that, did she? No, but she asked for my advice. And you gave it to her. Now, what else could I do? Are you asking for my advice, Miss Lee? No, thanks, Sergeant. Not today. Monday, May 18th, we started the final week of the cadet training class. 10.45 a.m., Captain Hoy called me into his office. Come in, Friday. Close the door. Connie Speck tells me we've got a dropout. Yes, sir. Joyce Anderson. Is it definite? We're going to clean her locker out tonight. Now, what's this all about? She's got a boyfriend. Well, so do most young women, or a husband. That's no reason. This one doesn't like policemen. Well, he didn't decide that in the last seven weeks, did he? No, sir. I think it's a point of view he's had for a long time. Well, how is it we didn't know about it? Did you check Anderson's personal history for him? Yes, sir. Just says she's engaged to this Landa. Her background investigator didn't pick up on it? Nothing in his report. Don't you think you ought to have a talk with him? Yes, sir, if you think it'll do any good. I'll tell you what I think, Friday. We've got a recruit here due to graduate in one week. Now, that's a pretty big investment. If there's any way we can hang on to her, we've got to know what it is. That's what I think. I'll check it out, Captain. Do that. Now, what about this boyfriend? You ever meet him? We passed the time of day once out in the corridor. Do any good to talk to him? No, sir, I doubt it. Why? I don't think he listens. <laughs> The background investigation on Joyce Anderson had been done by Sergeant Walston, but he was somewhere in the High Sierras on vacation. 11 a.m., I phoned Connie Speck and asked her to send Joyce Anderson to my office on her next break. I thought she was swinging the other way. In my classes, she's been fine all week, just like the start of the course. Yeah, well, they all seem to come on big that last week. Yeah, it's been one of our best classes, Joe, but I guess you have to expect to lose a recruit once in a while. If we lose this one, it'll be for the wrong reason. Am I too early? No, come on in, Anderson. I'm just leaving. Joyce, Captain Hoy tells me that you're quitting. Couldn't you have said I was resigning? The difference is why you're doing it. Do I have to tell you? My guy really laid it on the line last night. Is that right? I can be a wife or a policewoman, not both. He'd give you any reason? There was no discussion, just him or the job, and no in between. Well, he may cool off before graduation. He's going to meet me in the coffee shop for lunch. You mean you have to give him the answer right now? I leave with him or he goes alone. 
He's a nice guy, honestly, most of the time, and even if he wasn't a... Yeah. I'm hung up on him. All right, Anderson, get the A2 form from Sergeant Speck, fill out three copies, sign them, and come back here. Right now, Sergeant? Right now. Can I run over to the coffee shop first, just to tell Russ I'll be a little late? I'll send somebody over. Thank you. Let's get the paperwork cleaned up. Yes, sir. Sergeant Friday. Yeah, I remember. Where's Joyce? She'll be along. How about some more coffee? No, thanks. You mind if I sit down for a minute? Don't make it any longer. I won't be here. You're in a hurry, huh? Just want Joyce out of this place. Yeah, I know that. Do you mind telling me why? I don't have to give you a reason. No, you don't. But it's not hard to figure out. You got a traffic ticket once, or maybe a relative was arrested, or you've heard a lot of stories about policemen. It's usually one of the three. Pick one, Friday. They're all good. How many police officers do you know personally? I've been lucky so far. None. Well, I hope it never runs out for you, Landa. I hope you never need to know a cop. But it could happen. Because in the kind of world we live in, you could be held up on the street or mugged in a parking lot or your car stolen. That's when we'll hear from you. Or you'll have a bad accident some night and you'll need emergency treatment. Maybe that's when you'll get unlucky and an officer will show up in time to keep you from bleeding to death on the freeway. You don't like cops, but how'd you like to get along without them? When you read about a molested child or a raped woman or a store owner shot by a stick-up man, you just remind yourself it'd be a hundred times worse without any police force. I never said we don't need cops. Hang on to that thought. And the next time you get a traffic citation for speeding or reckless driving or for just trying to get away with something, remember this too. That officer who writes your ticket may be the same one who just went into a dark warehouse after an armed bandit. Now, they're not all heroes, Landa, and we don't claim they're all perfect. That's the kind I object to, not all of them. Just the ones that don't know how to use authority. Can you do better? The Academy's always looking for good men and women. You mean like Joyce? That's right. I'm sorry, Russ. Sergeant Speck said she was all out of A2 forms. Is that right? She said I was to ask you what I ought to do next. Oh, don't ask me, Joyce. Pardon? Take it up with him. At the conclusion of the eight-week training course and in preparation for the final ceremony, the class watched a graduation rehearsal. Friday, May 29th, the cadets marched into the gym to receive their diplomas from Chief Thomas Redden. The special award for the most outstanding cadet went to policewoman Joyce Anderson. Oh, hello, Miss Lee. Friday, Gannon. So Anderson graduated. Tommy, do we have a bet going? No, but if you feel like a loser, you can buy the coffee. That's cheap. What did it cost Anderson? What do you mean, Miss Lee? I was thinking about her wedding plans, scheduled for the day after graduation, weren't they? That's right, but it's been postponed. Oh, how'd you boys manage that? Joe gave Landa his recruiting speech. And made him see the light? No, I couldn't budge him. Well, some of it must have got through. I figure Landa told Joyce, and she broke the engagement. Well, she's a fool. Did you ever meet the guy, Miss Lee? It doesn't matter what he's like. They're in love. Maybe that'll occur to him someday. Oh, Friday, you're a troublemaker. You realize what you're doing to me. What I'm doing to you? Yes, what you're doing to me. Now, I've got to rewrite the end of my story. Well, I don't know about you, Miss Lee. Hmm? We like the new ending better. Los Angeles Police Department has employed police women since the turn of the century. Salary for police women is on a par with their male counterparts. There are 143 police women in the Los Angeles Police Service. 46 of these hold the rank of sergeant. They have replaced most of the desk sergeants in the detective divisions, thereby freeing their male counterparts for the more hazardous field investigations. 